I think the audio again gone, uh, Doctor Seema. <laughs> Seema, please unmute. Yeah. Doctor Seema, please unmute. Yeah, yeah, I have unmuted. Yeah, so uh, around twenty to fifty percent of individuals do have hypothyroid symptoms. It may be the minor one, not bothering them. Okay, so they could not make out that it is because of the turmoil in their thyroid function. and they are having those regular doses right so there are several causes for it so if you can just uh, text in the chat box yeah if you can make out what may be the causes uh, you are seeing the hypothyroid cases in the, the clinic so you would have encountered such patients having uh, regular doses of 125 150 uh, micro mg of this uh, uh, regular doses of thyronoma and proxen and still they come before you with all the symptoms that my psh is not under control my t3 t4 levels are fluctuating so if you know the answer you can just put it in the chat box further i go uh, yeah you can proceed ma'am dr seema yeah i have a doubt. Uh, if there any uh, fan is uh, On yeah, right there. fan is on right now. I should switch off. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. Like we have, we okay, are having okay. some disturbance. Okay. 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 you should have you shouldn't have to switch off that you can turn that it's okay yeah no that's fine <laughs> actually i'm going okay. cause no problem okay just a second i think my slide show has been paused somewhere i'll just share the slide again 
Just share again. Okay. Choose this again. Like, so, so there are several. Uh, I will continue with uh, what is this idea for? Uh, it is like you must be facing all this condition in the framework. I'll just share the screen. Are you able to share right now, Dr. Seema? No, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, so the causes of, I think now this is uh, visible. Yeah, 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 it is okay. Right. It on you this can start with it. Okay. So, causes of this raised TSH during the conventional treatment. Okay, the very first thing is the pseudo mall absorption what is it it is a non-compliance of the treatment whenever such patient comes to you make sure that they are on regular treatment of uh, this kind of setting. they say that yes since last 11 years or say uh, 12 years or say last six months also i been diagnosed and i i am on regular medication of this uh, levothyroxine uh, say thyronamide hydroxine then make sure that they are on regular treatment Many of the time, if this TSH is increased, they are into the clinical hypothyroidism, there are fair chances that they would be skipping this medicine. What is the reason behind it? It could be because of their memory problem. They forget the medicine in the morning, so they will think that, okay, I'll take in the afternoon. Or maybe they will skip the medicine completely throughout the day, and then it, the cycle goes on and on. Uh, the second condition is autoimmune thyroiditis. In this condition, you will be all aware that the thyroid gland itself is fighting against cells. So the function is disturbed. Another one is this is a big problem, gastrointestinal malabsorption. And there are various causes uh, that leads to the malabsorption of this levothyroxine. Although the patient would be taking the regular doses and still the patient has raised TSH value. Other medicinal intervention. That's why it is told that you know you are having other medical uh, medis medical um, uh, treatment. So you should have proper spacing between the thyroid medicine and this other medicine. Then it would be regular intake, but wrong spacing with the food. It is advised that you have to take the medicine early in the morning, empty stomach, and then usually the doctors uh, advise that to have food breakfast one hour gap. Okay. But what happens if you are having a heavy breakfast in one hour, which compromises of uh, milk or say fruits, bulky fruits, then again, this levothyroxine absorption is impaired. So make sure that your patient is anywhere in between this, like food like papaya, soy, coffee, etc. These all things actually interfere with the absorption of levothyroxine. So which are the things, other things in detail? This is a proton pump inhibitor. Where is it used? Those having the gastric GIT acidity wala problem hota hai. In those, usually this uh, medicines are prescribed to take it in morning before breakfast. So what will happen? Then again, it will interfere. Calcium citrate, calcium acetate, calcium carbonate, all the uh, calcium. Wala. Uh, milk, papaya, these two are the major things. Usually people do take uh, in breakfast. <coughs> coffee, beta blockers, tricyclic antidepressants. Those who are, say, uh, depressive patients or say, uh, schizophrenic, they would be into this. Okay, so these are various things. 
that uh, would lead to the malabsorption in the gastric and then in the intestine. So uh, the first phase of dissolution of this tablet takes place in the stomach. Okay. The tablet that is literally coated, it can dissolve in the stomach and then further absorption takes place in the duodenum. Okay. So you have to make sure that these all things are followed. If it is not followed, then you have to correct this because I usually do not ever uh, ask the patient to withdraw the medicine very soon here uh, the patient comes to me. It, I take some time, okay, because if the patient is at uh, 125, 150, my kanji baby loses, so there will be withdrawals. Then. There is a half life of the thyroid tablets that is 7 to 14 days. Even after withdrawing, the effect of this will continue for another one month also. So never be like cheering yourself that in a month, I withdraw the medicine and still the TSH is normal. So it is a wrong uh, about the understanding that you are having. You have hello, to wait for another. Dr. Seema. Yeah. yeah, hello. Please a minute, ma'am. Uh, can you please use a headset? Some of our participants yeah. are still having an issue with uh, hearing your voice. If we can uh, please. Now, now is, it, uh, is it better? Like, are you right now, are you using a headset? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, I'm fine, fine, it. fine. Yeah, so now okay, is it better? So maybe... <laughs> The For us, it's clear now, but uh, okay. some of the participants are still okay. saying that there is some issue. That's okay. Still. Now you can continue. No problem. Yeah. So okay. make sure that all these things are not interfering into the absorption because it will give a wrong impression throughout the case. Okay. That he is taking regular medicine. He is taking it proper way. He is on regular doses. And then you make sure that, yes, the patient is about the doses required or whether it is malabsorption okay so this is another uh, this is a long workout if uh, to exclude why that uh, medicine is not ex uh, active it could be pseudo malabsorption as i said the patient is non-compliant to the treatment advice drug interference uh, nutrient interference or maybe during the pregnancy so suspected gastrointestinal malabsorption of thyroxine so these are the various reasons uh, I'll give the link where you can go through uh, this uh, all things uh, later on at the last of the my presentation. Okay. So these are very thing. I mean, it is very really elaborative, and once you go, it will be like a hole in the pocket of the patient if you <laughs> go through the stool exam examination or this and that. So uh, what you can do at the clinical level treating this kind of patient where continuous regular uh, intake of levothyroxine and still their TSH is not under control. Uh, eventually, they are advised to take the higher doses of uh, levothyroxine. So, materials and methods of this study. This is case series of homeopathic management of five hypothyroid individuals who are having raised TSH on regular calculated dose of levothyroxine. So, my, they were on the calculated doses of levothyroxine according to the physician whom they were consulting. All five cases are of female patient with mean age of 36 years and lowest being 21 years. So she was the youngest one when she met me uh, of 21 years. Uh, this is something maybe new to few. Uh, so let's keep score for hypothyroidism that I've been experimenting with uh, to rate the hypothyroidism status that I'll show at the end of this presentation. And what I used is change in TSH, tapered dose of levothyroxine along with the symptomatic relief was analyzed to see whether my medicine actually acted or not. Okay, so what was the result I got? Homeopathic constitutional medicine along with specific medicines, that is spongia 30C and thyroidinum 3X were prescribed, which reduced the raised TSH. The levothyroxine doses were tapered much lower than the previous doses. All these patients, although they were being experimented by the earlier physician uh, by bringing down the required doses, but again there was shoot in TSH, and that was the basic reason why they um, uh, they were seeking this homeopathic. Patients did not have any further deterioration of health and were in a better state of whatever the signs and symptoms they had, whether it was related to thyroid or other complaints, they were in a better state of health. The Sulexi score for hypothyroidism was not found to be useful in all the cases. I'm talking just about these five cases, except for two in correlation to the raised TSF and clinical symptoms. So uh, this is a, a 
say points are there about related to the hypothyroidism. So in every month review, I have to give him the score. So according to the PSH, it should correlate. Okay. Any score uh, greater than three is subclinical, above five is towards the clinical level of thyroidism, hypothyroidism. So, but in my cases, uh, TSH was raised. They were subclinical according to the T4 level. TSH was increased in few. In between the score, uh, the previous reports were showing the clinical hypothyroidism. But they approached me during their subclinical hypothyroidism level. The mean TSH, this is something important that I noticed that mean TSH improved from 0.28. Improved to 4.28 from 25.86 at statistical T 3.90, and it was uh, this is a very small sample, but still it was uh, statistically valid because the p value is less than 0 0.05. And this is the chart showing about the TSH before and after the homeopathic treatment. Uh, you can see that the first patient here has shown that when she approached me, her TSH was 46.5, which after the treatment, say, I have to see, check uh, the duration of treatment for this patient and it reached to 6.01. The second patient, 20.93 to 1.11. Third patient, from 40 to 4.16. The fourth, 22 to 4.63. The fifth patient, if I am not wrong, this is the uh, girl who is uh, 21 years old when she met me. Uh, that was 24.05 to 5.49. Usually we consider TSH for assessing this uh, status of hypothyroidism, right? Uh, but you should definitely consider T3 and T4 to put them into the subclinical and uh, clinical hypothyroidism. According to the standard of American uh, Thyroid Association, you need not to treat anyone who is having a TSH around 10. Okay, if they are not showing any symptoms, then according to their protocol also, they are not supposed to be given levothyroxine. They should wait. Okay. And if T3 and T4 are below the normal range, then definitely the treatment should be started. Change in doses of levothyroxine. So this is the first patient. Uh, this patient was schizophrenic. She was on antidepressant when she came to meet me. So she was taking 100 and before that it was 125. When she met me, it was 100. So I tapered it to 75. Her all antidepressant drugs were withdrawn uh, in I think two months of gap. And it was, she was continuing on 75, but I lost this patient after six months of follow. And this patient, this is, <laughs> it was really puzzling me. She came with me in a very turmoil stage where she could not speak. Hoarseness of voice was typical. She was an advocate. Uh, so continuous speaking was something that was bothering her. So she had approach for homeopathic treatment. Okay. So uh, she came to 25. From 125 to 25 for this patient. Now this patient is still there with me, and this patient actually, after uh, say gap of five months, she stopped the medicine, and then again after five months she met me because her TSH again came to 19.5. She stopped, discontinued the treatment, and now she is again with me. So you, this is something a learning experience that you should continue the homeopathic treatment as well. So she could be actually at the withdrawal uh, stage of levothyroxine, but she in between stopped. So I have to <laughs> restart the whole treatment. This uh, uh, patient is still there with me, and now she, this last month she is now at 12.5 uh, micro ng of thyroxine. So now by next month I am hopeful that I will withdraw the doses. This patient from 100 to 50, uh, she is also with me and uh, yeah, studies going on about the withdrawal. And this, my 21 years of birth, she actually, she was doing her CA so she could not come and meet me in between. And she is now on telephonic conversation, I have asked uh, them to withdraw the, uh, this 25 to 12.5. So this is the chart, the 32 years schizophrenic patient. How long they've been taking the medication? That is 6, 12, 13, 9, and 12. This is the duration of treatment. The whatever report I have seen that 
um, just a second, I'll just ask that my neighbor to just uh, just uh, stop this drilling. <laughs> uh, give me a second. Hello. Yeah, we we can yeah, hear just you. Just a second. Uh, you, uh, my, I'm audible. Is there any disturbance? I think some drilling sound is coming. Yeah, yeah. I just asked my husband to tell go and tell my neighbors to stop that. <laughs> Yeah, sorry for the inconvenience. Yeah, so this is the details. The first patient, uh, she was patient, was taking the treatment for six years. And with me, she was for six months. I had given her Udmi uh, Before that, I had tried with Hyosinus, but I failed. So I switched over to Carcinosin. The This is the score. Okay, it was seven. So she, she stands in the clinical thyroidism. Okay, that was after the treatment of six months, it came down to uh, three. The second patient, she was 40, which I said that she was the advocate. Uh, 12 years of treatment with levothyroxine, which was fluctuating. She was there with me. The report that I've shown is of six months. Naturally, one name was given. And along with that, because her uh, throat complaints were very prominent, so I had given her 30. It treated in between and I remember of giving her Argentine nitrogen. And these are the scores. Okay, so she was not actually into the category of clinical hypothyroidism. It stands somewhere near to the uh, subclinical hypothyroidism. This is the third patient. You can see 13 years of treatment with levothyroxine. And with me, the, that score, uh, the reports I have shown you is for the one year drug treatment. Sulfur thyroidism spongia and three, score was three and then later on two. The patient of 51 years old, treatment was taken for nine long years. With me, 14 months. Ignatia was given, Matromu was given. She continued with thyroidinum 3x tablets. And the score was six and then three. The last young girl, treatment of four years with me, 14 months. Pulsitla was given, Calculator, Thyroidin 3x tablets were given. Uh, she had a strong family history. Her mother was uh, having goiter, her father was having thyroid complaints. Her uh, sister was having some congenital deformity. So anyways, thyroidinum, I had given her as adjuvant therapy with my constitution medicine. So discussion, okay. So hypothyroidism is a slow progressing disease affecting metabolism and growth with array of signs and symptoms. The patient dependent on levothyroxine has to continue levothyroxine medication for life now. So you know, once the patient is diagnosed with hypothyroidism, the first thing the doctor says, yeah, you try with three months or six months of treatment, we'll see that age is one of the factor. You may need to take it for your life now. Okay, during pregnancy, if it is diagnosed with so post uh, delivery, she will be checked for the levels. If it is normal, then okay, otherwise, she will need to continue for life. In this case series, all the five patients were having regular chronic medication with levothyroxine, as I mentioned. So it was around 14 years, the maximum. It was found that they had raised PSH even with patient compliance with regular intake of medicine. So this is something important patient compliance was there. So there was interfering the absorption of this levothyroxine. No other cause was attributed to increased doses of levothyroxine by the treating physician and so they started with homeopathic medicine. All the five patients improved symptomatically. As I said, that schizophrenic patient, she had improved. The young girl, she had uh, dysmenorrhea and amenorrhea as well. So her menstruation got normal. So symptomatically, they did not attribute it to hypothyroidism, but everything got improved. And the thyroxine doses were tapered as TSH came under and near to normal range. So you can see in this figure that 6.01, 1, 4.1, 4 
4.63 and 5.4. So it was near to the normal condition. All the patients reported improvement with tapered doses of levothyroxine. Since patients are still under treatment, there is scope of withdrawing levothyroxine. So I'm hopeful that they will be at the lowest dose and then I can withdraw this medication. Medicine found useful to me during this treatment are the concentration remedies, natrum mood, ignatia, sulfuric acid, and pulsatiline cafeteria. Some in between acute uh, conditions were there, so it was treated accordingly to the present complaint. Spongia and thyroidin 3x were given a specific thyroid remedy. Not to all, uh, when, as I said, that if there was a strong family history or uh, like big nutrition problem which was prominent or uh, their speech was altered because of this food complaints, uh, this was the, the scope of further research. <laughs> so, this is something very limited. Uh, we do the research and we just Keep it aside, but it's a learning experience for me. The case series has limited number of individuals under study. Hence, a proper experimental research should be conducted in such hypothyroid condition. Treatment for malabsorption. So, uh, according to the conservative system of medicine, the treatment for malabsorption of LT4 is intravenous dose. They uh, inject this LT4. And then they give, the, first of all, they give the test dose of say 100 micrograms, that is the 100 what we take in the tablet form. So they give it in the intravenous way. And then they see if it is, uh, because since it is like, uh, in the mainly it is for the gastrointestinal interference. If there is a malabsorption because of the uh, gastrointestinal problems, like H. pylori uh, infection, or uh, anything that is really a uh, uh, long continued treatment of uh, gastrointestinal disorder. So that is really <laughs> troublesome. It's still not resolves. Uh, if you can go through the research paper about the intravenous doses of endothyroidism, you can see that it did not resolve the condition. Action of homeopathic medicine in such cases where it helped in the absorption of levothyroxine should be verified. So it just not treated this condition of hypothyroidism. It helped in the better absorption of levothyroxine as well as the overall well-being of the patient. So this is the way that I just thought of uh, looking at these cases where these many years of medication and they were not improving according to their uh, biochemical reports. Okay. So now uh, if I can see the chat box, uh, what is the kind of research that I have done here? Uh, okay, so you can put it in the chat box. I can't see the chat box on my screen. Uh, I'm audible. Hello. Yes, you're audible, ma'am. Audible. Yeah, so I just want to know if the uh, participants can tell me what kind of research was this, what I have presented. A case series of five patients. What was it? So this is the, uh, you can just go through it. This is the patient. Uh, she had her 20.93. TSH level 8.30.97 uh, before visiting me and then after visiting me it actually went up 31.46 that was alarming for me from 20 to 31 but after a month of treatment it came down to normal okay one more report as a schizophrenic patient it was 46.05 which came down out of the treatment of six months to 6.01 so what is research and what did I do in that research? Okay, that was a case series and it was completely, uh, uh, what to say, priority test, good. And anything else? Was it an experimental research or an observational research? Case study, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I will start from what is research, right? So according to me, research is a very really right, which cannot be explained uh, in say a few words, <laughs> because still I think I again lost my uh, this thing, screen share. So I'll again share my slide.
uh, this research can be defined as is it visible to everyone yes visible like this yeah yeah so research can be defined as creation of new knowledge idea in this period of lockdown everyone would have done lots of research whether it be about cooking or say about your own uh, textual knowledge or whatever it be about uh, acting in covid situation or what hcq can do in this situation so lots of research would be done individually by everyone so creation is a, of new knowledge and idea using of existing knowledge in a new way whatever you know then you are using it uh, in a better way careful study of particular concern or problem collection of data and information during this covid we got lots of information but into data by uh, the uh, supreme authority the research centers okay and it is a systematic inquiry and scientific method. so research is actually a systematic inquiry scientific method so we homeopaths actually do a systematic inquiry but lose the thread in between somewhere and it is scientific but still we are not able to actually justify at times so we lack somewhere okay so what is scientific scientific is something that is based on methods and principles of science science is the intellectual and practical activity encompasses the systematic study of structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment we are doing it day in day out in our <laughs> clinic that we are observing we are experimenting there would be n number of drugs that would be used in a uh, one particular diagnosis and we are experimenting let's see okay so according to me this first part is according to me science should be universal repeatable and explainable okay uh, the drugs that were used 100 years back uh, for one particular situation or one particular diagnosis in homeopathy are still useful in the same condition it should be repeatable this is something very doubtful whether a uh, homeopathic medicine can be repeated in a same diagnosis if we various factor we cannot uh, go on a controversial way but we are not able to produce the same kind of result with every single patient explainable and we should be explain our result why my medicine acted or why it did not give the desired results so there again there is a little bit fall for us so other characteristics of science are objectivity verifiability ethical neutrality this is being unbiased while you are doing some experiment or doing some study you should be unbiased like i am doing the study about homeopathy i am being a homeopath uh, i just uh, overlook the previous uh, uh, reports no sorry i should not be doing it. okay reliability okay whatever i am doing the study should be reliable it should be uh, concerned with the present situation okay precision and accuracy whatever the figures are there it should be the same abstractness uh, this is something uh, very unique to experiments that if you have abstract thought then only you will be having a hypothesis predictability once you have got a result then it should be able to predict the future by using this so this is a basic uh, classification of uh, medical research primary secondary and lots of things are there this is one type of classification experimental what they are doing during this vaccine study Uh, phase one already done at various places. Phase two, phase three, phase four. They put this into any drug is into the market. So there is phase four. They are studying after introducing a medicine in the market how far it is good. Observation study, experimental observation. Okay. So I'll go into depth in this. Okay. Descriptive study and analytical study. Observational study. Okay. Descriptive study is taking a single case and going into depth with every little. knowledge about the case and we get information about it. analytical study observation study it is case control and cohort experimental is randomized and non randomized this is a very vast topic i cannot cover it in this one hour of the half an hour would be with me uh, so i cannot uh, discuss everything retrospective is backward looking already something has happened we are looking at the cause and effect cross section having two samples and we are interchanging the uh, 
remedies. Prospecting, we are already having a, uh, what to say, we are having a protocol and we are doing the experiment in the controlled way. This whole thing, experimental case control cohort, for all this, you need an ethical committee to get the approval because uh, when there is a case control, you, uh, there are samples, okay, group one, group two, of which if you want to know the uh, result of one particular remedy, so uh, you can go with the placebo group. So you are compromising that group. So you need to have an ethical committee who gives approval that human rights are not violated. Okay, it should be, uh, or eventually it gets a funded study. So these all actually do not fall into our perspective. Retrospective study, yes, you can do. Having few cases, not few cases, but number of cases of a particular diagnosis and you go back to see the result of the medicine. Processing, you cannot do at the clinical level. Only if you have a this committee or you are in college, those who are doing teaching, they must know this thing. So what one can do at the level of clinic? This is all observation study. Therapy study, drug study. Uh, last few days, we have got very good webinars by our senior doctors where it was like a keynote restriction. If you give this medicine, definitely we'll see the result. So that is a therapy study. Number of, a number of cases treated with the same drug and you get it. Okay, drug study. I find positive indicator in this, 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 this condition and I found something that was not mentioned and it is effective in that case also. Someone just uh, texted in the text box, uh, case series, okay. Uh, so case report, case series is something one to five number of cases, okay. Single case report as it is uh, suggesting, it should be the one single case series is anything five or less than five, okay. Retrospective study, yes, you can do at the clinical level. Having, uh, say, 50 cases of eczema, you bring down uh, to the, uh, what to say, observation level, what all changes were there and what all other things you found during the study, okay, during the treatment that got cured, okay. Prognostic study, diagnostic study, secondary data analysis, okay. So therapy study and drug study, you can definitely do at the clinical level. I have done a case series here where I had got five cases, okay. And retrospective, one of the study was a retrospective study where I had got uh, 25 cases of hypothyroidism treated by another doctor, but I did the study. What was the result about it? So this is the case uh, of hypothyroidism. Actually, I never met this girl, but I believe what I heard. So parents of a young girl came to consult me in month of February. More than them, I was more in hurry to complete the case. I, I remember this case because I missed my train from Tirvela back to Kochi because of this case. Uh, I read the case all in hurry, which was taken by junior doctor of Ames. She had already briefed me about the case that they will be coming to meet me. They were great and uh, somehow I actually missed my train on that day. So that's why I remember this case very well. I saw the age, it was 22 years, saw the reports, which was evident of uh, having autoimmune thyroiditis. From my past experience, not much, but yes, a uh, few of the failures in treating autoimmune thyroiditis, I was hopeless. I knew that uh, I may be doing something wrong with this case. Uh, okay. So this is the report that they had come with. This is a girl of 22 years age. Her anti-PPO was rising, okay, not uh, like beyond 1300 or beyond counter measures. It was 30.5. Her TSH was 60.04. Her T4 was decreased. T3 still was in the normal range, okay. So uh, the father said that this is 60, but uh, before this, it was around. 20. They did not bring that report, but now within a month, it has again raised. So we are worried. Okay. So this was in the month of January, 2020. So presenting complaints actually puzzled me. I spoke to the patient over the phone as she had not come to uh, for the consultation. The parents had come. So before getting to the patient over the phone, uh, the parents had told me that she is fine. Never complained of any symptoms. So what to do? Like she is having a big her blood parameters are showing that she is hypothyroid but she is not having any problem but during a health checkup checkup done during uh, in the office 
she was diagnosed with this condition and after a month they repeated the test so it has all increased okay so the scene has a completely changed while talking to her i asked her how are you she pleasingly replied and find out i inquired further for the symptoms because she see she she actually sounded completely fine she did not have any complaint so obviously we have to go for a complete case although the junior doctor had taken the case uh, earlier as described by the parents but i need to go through every single thing because i am not seeing the patient personally so i, I spoke with her so she had erratic sleep she was working with a uh, mnc she is a hr uh, she is doing something in hr in pune so because of her injury leaves late uh, obviously i <laughs> watched her facebook and everything so she had hair fall since couple of months she stayed in pune and her skin remains dry so she actually uh, parents visited me in the month of feb so it is fall of winter okay but she said is it irrespective of the cold climate her skin remains dry she likes to have cold drink juices like mango watermelon she is selective about fish she do not eat fish on regular basis but whenever she comes home back in kerala she likes fish but it should be fried one salted one desire for cold drink was mentioned by the mother she has water from fridge she likes cold water she is chilly she is very lovely sweet nature as mentioned by the parent shares her problems but only off late after she uh, went to pune now she is like not sharing much okay she does not and says i can handle it. she always be the first person to help anyone in her office she, her mother narrated how she rushed her friend to hospital when she fainted so this was one of the incident that the mother narrated what about her childhood her childhood was never troubling loving she was loving caring sharing loves traveling reading makes friends easily okay so this was all reported by the parents that being a child she will always a good baby i inquired if she was pampered one for which the mother said she is the younger one and we never had any need of love extra love to be given to her as compared to the elder daughter she been caring loving all the time with her elder daughter also she shared a very good relationship uh she was always confident as a child as well as now in her profession she is working in mnc and planning to take a break for higher studies her menses are regular history of throat infection during childhood was there of late she has become little lazy feels tired waking in morning and occasionally constipated no family is she a thyroid complaint parents are healthy and sister also is healthy a simple dose of medicine was given on the basis of available information i did not go into repertorizing because i hardly go into repertorization during the first case taking first prescription okay on call whatever it was there i prescribed on call she was very clear about what she wanted to speak so her mind was very clear jolly happy uh, she sounded pretty clear about uh, all the aspects confident so this is the report the parents came to meet me in fact the report that i showed you was of february, um, january 19 and after a month of treatment 3rd of march they came back and still the patient had not come to meet me because uh, uh, she is in pune she is working there so now her psh within a month of treatment okay so it has come to 6.7 it was uh, actually good feeling for me because i really did not expect any result in this case i have not seen the patient have taken the case uh, not superficially but it was not very elaborate you know because on phone i cannot extract so many information if you are feeling so then why you are feeling so during child you did you have any problem or where did this complaint started from as i generally do in all my hypothyroid cases okay that i actually go back in the life space and ask uh, when was it diagnosed and uh, before that like 2 3 years of gap what was the situation during which uh, you been through and now this uh, endocrine disorder has uh, come up so anyways uh, this case was not taken into that okay so a single dose of phosphorus was given to this girl 
advice to follow a better sleep pattern. This is something that should be advised to all the person who are having endocrine sleep pattern. You know that we have a biological clock and now we are not following it. We are like into WhatsApp, Facebook, social media, this and that. So we sleep late, but we our biological clock should shut down by 10 o'clock so that after that only we can have a metabolic endocrinological uh, what to say balanced okay so since i found that she had that this uh, erratic sleep pattern so i advise her to have a better sleep as she stayed alone in pune uh, this was something very interesting that i found and i need to verify on this in the, all the patients that i come across there was a history of having outside food most of the days and gobi manchurian was the most common she said that this is the available food that tastes good so this is important gobi manchurian you know that gobi manchurian when it is cooked it is half cooked actually the cauliflower which is used it is half cooked it is blanched not cooked properly uh, and it is not deep fried most of the time so this cauliflower cabbage broccoli this is something that I actually advise patients to avoid because these are goitrogenous. Okay, uh, those uh, in few of the cases, not in all, but few of the cases I found that before having this thyroid complaint, they had this craving to have this cabbage. And maybe now it is this Chinese food is so prevalent in our society that easily available. We can make it at home also. So people prefer this very. Uh, it's very tasty, yummy. So I found in few of the patients where the this thing was there. They are craving for this thing as well as uh, a history. Like they've been eating this thing since some time and after that only they started experience all this complaint. So I advise to avoid for some time and stick to a healthy food. This should be always done. Okay, this patient since she had not taken any levothyroxine treatment, so I attribute this success to that one thing. She had not taken the allopathic medicine. And that's why it gave a good scope of homeopathy in this case. Because uh, once you are into a drug dependent state, our medicine may take some time because already the organ has somewhere forgot how to function. Like in the previous cases, we had continuous treatment with levothyroxine and later on, they are having array of symptoms and then it took me some time to bring them back to the near to normal condition. So this is something that I follow in my uh, clinical experience side. So this is natural mu uh, mentioned in William Birth, physiological material, sensation as of a plug in throat, also when not swallowing with rawness and a feeling as if everything would be closed by the swelling. Okay, so it could be like <laughs> global hystericus, but I have used this one particular thing in my poetrous uh, patient, as a hypothyroid patient, where they say that well, there is something here lodged. Okay, it could be Ignatia, but you need to just uh, classify where this uh, patient falls in. Okay, it could be Ignatia. It could be natural, but they, they are both complementary. So this is something that I used in this patient where I said that uh, the patient is advocate and she had lots of these throat complaints. Her voice was very hoarse, but I all uh, attributed all those things because of her taste PSH. Uh, so anyways, that helped in her case as well. Next is spongium. Uh, this study actually I am trying to conduct it, uh, the trying with spongia to be given more number of patients, but I did not find it so useful without a constitution medicine. Uh, although I give spongia to those where I find that there is, uh, uh, what you say, a family background of uh, thyroid disorder, or there is some pathological changes, right, in case of character, which is actually troubling them. Spongia produces enlargement and induration of gland, especially affecting the thyroid and testicles. So this is mentioned in William Bird. Uh, if you remember the class by Dr. Nikam, he had appointed one case where he had given, uh, uh, in a case of infertility of a man, spongia. He had mentioned that in duration of plant testicle, right? So uh, this, 
actually uh, this came to me uh, during uh, preparing this ppt okay physiological effects of iodine upon coagulant are so similar to those of spongia that they can be studied together iodine i usually use in hypothyroid case no 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 i use it in hypothyroid cases because you can correlate that in spite of eating the patient is losing flesh so i usually use it in hypothyroid cases in lower doses with the constitution medicine whatever it is coming up spongia has caused uh, pain tenderness and swelling of existing goiters and hanemans pours report that the region of thyroid gland is as if hardened so you can definitely think of giving this spongia in cases of goiter okay when you see that there is protrusion and there is a growth in throat so you can definitely try with it and i helped in part of uh, that swelling and all actually reduced okay so patient that were having that uh, degeneration problem and all that all came from there this knowledge and the many cures made of goiter with spongia gave us great confidence in the action of this drug on this plant so think of spongia go through it whether it actually fits to the patient you are dealing with what is mentioned in clark medical medical throat symptom that is ameliorated by lying down constantly recurring needle like speech is about pit of throat externally in lower part of goiter sticking internally in throat especially after eating thyroid gland swollen and hard with suffocatory attack at night stitching pain and pressure bitter taste in throat in esophagus these are all details given in clark you can go and read it the clark mathematica on swallowing stitches in neck pass off violent straining pain pain in goiter moving sensation in goiter these are all actually the common symptoms of goiter all the patient most of the patient will tell you that yes uh, swallowing is difficult but then then again you have to differentiate between that whether it is lyco or whether it is plexus or whether it is it's ignatia natrum you okay but this could be one of the medicine that you should uh, think of i have given thyroidism as intercurrent in lower potency to many of my patients and it has acted really well uh, thyroidism since it is sarco it is hormone metabolic disturbances is expected emaciation or paradoxical obesity so this is something very interesting where you can see that emaciation is also there in thyroidism and obesity is also there in thyroidism so be careful while using it in hypothyroid and hypothyroid patients so if you see emaciation again you can use thyroidism obesity i think you can use but the potency may vary according to the preceding symptoms so i used to be in uh, hypothyroid it is 3x right uh, and intercurrent if i give then it is in 200 in hyperthyroid i usually go with the lower potency so uh, then it is peripheral mixodema sweating of the hands and feet hypersomnia during day chilliness loss of hair condition of slight increase in size of the means of this uh, hypothyroidism okay but this is important all symptoms of thyroidism are aggravated in women before and during menses so i have got a case where the only problem with her was her menstruation before menses she starts having cramps and all i had nothing in the case and by whatever say she is a known patient to me i couldn't ask her in detail about the history and all okay so i gave her thyroidinum 200 single dose and the very next menstruation was all okay she had varicose vein that usually gets aggravated before menstruation that all got better with this single dose of thyroidinum she was on uh, alproxen 50 now she is on 12.5 and soon next month i will be taking it to once in once or twice in a week and then it is in the evening in relation and after menstruation so again you need to uh, make sure whether it is lecithin conium and all you need to differentiate between medicine that actually helped me treating hypothyroidism are pulsatilla calcireta bignesia carcinosin sepia max lyco lecithin strepti and phosphorus okay. so this is the zuleski score and just flushing and you can just see it these are all the symptoms you can find it. by searching in the and this is another thyroid symptom questionnaire it is really important if you can get it used two references you can take a picture of it okay so that's it from my side uh, i wind up my this presentation here this is important gastrointestinal malabsorption of thyroxine 
you can find lots of lots of information in the about the treatment of tyrosin what is done in the conservative medicine of this uh, uh, medicine how they treat and this is the clinical scoring scale in thyroid uh, thyroidology you can find this Zulevsky score and other standard scales of uh, hyperthyroidism as well as thyroidism there are many other references also i did not put it here okay types of research and study i found it really important if you want to go and um, just go through what are the research types and designs okay pseudomyelin absorption this is nothing but the non compliance so that's it from my side uh, thank you everyone for <laughs> having the patience i shared my experience a little bit uh, not much of success for and so any doubts we can take Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, uh, can we have a question answer session? Yeah. Sure. Okay. If you can the if you can see the chat box, there are uh, some questions yeah, are there. Yeah, I'm uh, trying. Uh, some are messaging. Please, uh, those who are messaging, please uh, put it in the uh, everyone setting so that the faculty to see the see that. Okay. Don't message me privately. Uh, what about Hashimoto's thyroiditis? Yeah, Hashimoto's is nothing but the autoimmune thyroiditis. Okay, you treat it just like a normal uh, hypothyroid condition. Okay, you need to take a complete case history. Make sure that. Uh, what is the condition of the thyroid gland? Go for a ultrasonography for sure. Okay, whether this Hashimoto, when did it start? How much times? Uh, the since how long the patient is into this condition? Because there are possibility that with this the patient may be having goitrous condition. If nodules are there, then you have to look for it. Okay, what type of nodule are there? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thyroidinum 3x and spongia reputation. Thyroidinum 3x, if it is with the family history and uh, uh, lots of complaints related to this thyroid uh, gland in particular, deglutition problem. So you can start with three tablets, OD, and depends on the menstrual cycle. Okay, so you need to judge it. And spongia, it is usually spongia 30, three to four pills, empty stomach. Okay management of asymptomatic patients with increased blood counts okay so uh, what i mentioned here of that girl right so she was actually asymptomatic right but her blood counts were increased you need to go according to our homeopathic standard during the complete case taking and you will come to a constitutional medicine give it because since there is no symptom related to the thyroid gland you can't go with this thyroid gland or spongia in particular Okay, once you start with this, you can use thyroidinum as intercurrent. Okay, so that will help you out. So, autoimmune okay, thyroiditis is done. And congenital hypothyroidism. Okay, congenital hypothyroidism. I had a boy who had already gone through a lot of homeopathic medicine uh, for his treatment about allergy, skin condition, that all got better. Okay, but uh, it did not go off. Uh, completely. I don't know whether those doctors had ignored this thyroid level, but he was hypothyroid. When he came to me, he was having uh, TSH level with uh, some 19 or something. Okay. And he was taking regular doses of 62.5 uh, thyroid. So, uh, according to the case thing, I did not give him this thyroid number spongia because he is, uh, he was of the age of 13 or 14. Now he is in 10 standards in one year. So uh, only the constitutional medicine was given to him because it was all crystal clear. Although he had been uh, taking this medicine for long, but it was crystal clear case. So I gave him the constitutional medicine. It was Silesia and then calcarea force. And now his CSH level are normal. He is on 25 uh, daily doses. When to start treatment based on PSH level? So, uh, if the patient comes to you directly, then there is nothing like starting or not starting the treatment. Okay, Toshiba has asked this question: When to start treatment based on PSH level? Okay, anything, any any abnormal level, you can give the homeopathic treatment because definitely that patient would be having thyroid symptom or any other symptom. So, just treat them 
with the constitutional medicine and as i told if there is a family history of thyroid uh, so you can think about thyroidism and sponsia okay giving it as inter intercurrent okay did you manage cases along with thyroxine yes 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 i mentioned much before ruby i never withdraw the medicine at the very moment they come to me okay i taper it because as i said uh, this has a you know, half life this thyroxine tablets have half life of 7 or 14 days so once you withdraw the patient will be good going good for another one month also okay half life is like till then the medicine is acting and another that many days it can act it will be in the blood circulation so but gradually once you taper and then you can withdraw it but for me i i don't know whether i am not confident about it or i don't have it i do draw the medicine at the very moment i the patient comes to me okay whether it be 25 micro ng or whether it be 125 okay i taper it in step by step uh, method if you uh, follow the standard protocol of allopathic medicine then it is their all their formula also that it is 1.6 to 1.8 micro ng per kg of body weight they prescribe so once they are increasing it is usually uh, 10 to 15 or 25 micro ng of the previous doses if it is not controlled how to manage patients coming after allopathic treatment who are already yeah the same way you give the thyroxine um, tablet not to be withdrawn and the constitution medicine and i said presented those all five patients were actually on the chronic treatment of this thing okay so they are already on the verge of stopping those medicine but as i said i don't actually uh, withdraw it at the very first go uh, yeah dr dhania please share slide of thyroid disorder so i don't did not understand this thing uh, thyroid disorder what you mean whether it is hypothyroid hyperthyroid goiter or what uh, so you can just unmute and ask me what is it thyroid disorder danya uh, i am audible to all dr deepu hello yes ma'am you are audible yeah. you can continue so i did not understand dr danya's question uh, please share the slide of thyroid disorder whether she is there connected or not uh, so you are there in the whatsapp you can just ping me what to do in pregnant ladies with ps if now i have not come across the pregnant ladies but uh, uh, with precaution definitely you can give the constitution medicine not going with all this thyroidism for sure as an intercurrent it will act but i am not sure about it so i can't comment on it if the patient can conce- conceives in between homo treatment before ps yes uh, that is according to your confidence level if that medicine has helped you and now if she is asymptomatic then obviously it is the single dose that goes and it uh, it would be repeated after two or three months of uh, duration so if she is asymptomatic then you can keep her on placebo okay man food item causing hypothyroidism i said goitrogenous foods are mentioned as uh, cabbage broccoli cauliflower these three things are for sure papaya interferes coffee definitely it affects the thy- uh, goiter uh, thyroid function ma'am please explain the taping for taping protocol you can just go through it uh, comes out of experience actually i usually go 25 uh, downgrade okay if um, it's it's uh, going up uh, very soon can we completely with yeah, yeah yes yes definitely you can withdraw the thyroxine medicine but in my experience it is better to go step by step okay and once you withdraw then wait for at least one month for a review one and a half month okay so it will go around 2 months of time to go for a review to check after the withdrawal whether the tsh has increased or not if it has it has increased then go for another doctor then you can do you do in this year <laughs> yeah yes doctor doctor then you can ask the question again doctor then are you there anyways we can connect through whatsapp no problem <laughs> yeah no problem then yeah, investigation like, uh... yeah investigation i am very lucky without telling my patient come with the investigation every month i don't know whether it is because of the research part being conducted at aims they know it so maybe told by the uh, people at reception i don't know but i am very lucky to have every month's uh, report uh thank you jaydev sir <laughs> Ma'am, spawned your slide. Okay, uh, Deepu, you can. Yeah, please, Tanya, come in. 
Uh, ma'am, uh, doctor, I, uh, I just missed the questionnaire of thyroid disorder uh, patient. Yeah, surely. For... I'll, I'll, you just okay. ping me on WhatsApp, I'll share, and uh, no doubts, we will share all the slides, definitely. Okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Fucus vesiculus. It is a big pitfall for me. I used, uh, in my initial starting days of having thyroid, where I used uh, this thing for controlling the obesity related to this thyroid complaint, but I did not find it useful because already the patient into a, uh, is there into a hormonal turmoil, okay? There is a hormonal disturbance that has led to obesity and you are giving another mother tincture to treat it. I don't know how far it could be useful because you are not correcting the main cause of the disease. Uh, that has led to this obesity. So I restrict myself using mother tincture, whether it be the dysmenorrhea, menstrual irregularities, I don't use mother tinctures. Ideal protocol for hyperthyroid and hypothyroid. Mm -hmm. Hyperthyroid, uh, I don't have many cases, I have only few. It uh, did not respond so well, although they, according to the biochemistry, but their symptoms all regressed. Iodine, as I mentioned that in hypothyroid, iodine has helped. Hypothyroid, as I said, constitutional with spongia, thyroid, and one thing, bromium. If you have this uh, prominent symptoms of respiratory complaints, past history of wheezing asthma, you can think of bromium if uh, their thyroid levels or uh, condition of the thyroid gland Symptoms related to their throat are not entering, then think of bromium if there is history of asthma. Okay, Dr. Uh, Dhani, you can ask the question. Okay. Yeah, she asked, uh, so she wanted to have that questionnaire. No issues. Okay, we, shall, okay. we can share, share it. Thus, obesity reduced while taking. Uh, a very important thing uh, obesity, you always need to have these parameters recorded. Record their weight for sure, make sure what are the changes in their skin, about their hair condition. Okay about their swellings, okay. Obesity, definitely, they have did not gain any extra kg of weight with my treatment. They have decreased, but I'm sure they did not put on the weight. In extremely obese patient, it is really difficult to burn out the fat. It takes lots of time, okay. But uh, in my patients, uh, they actually started with their exercise, hitting the gym, so they helped, but did not help much. But they did not uh, went on a higher scale. Why our question is not answered? What is the question by Dr. Hema Suresh? I missed it because this <laughs> screen was scrolling up too fast. Uh, Dr. Hema Suresh, I did not see your question. Hypothyroidism protocol go with the constitution along with iodine. Uh, mail ID, if we may share my email ID, insighthealth20 at gmail.com. Uh, and, 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 and any more questions? Lycopodium 200 cured got the case. Congratulations, doctor. Uh, Lycopodium 200, yes. In my case, it came as uh, complementary medicine in one of the cases. Lycopodium. If you continue thyroxine and hormone, which medicine will be effective? Uh, this is something that I wanted to show you during this uh, first uh, study. Why? Uh, what is the effect of homeopathic medicine? See, all these years, since last 14 years or 15 years or say 4 years, those patients were continuously on the thyroxine tablets, okay. But still their doctor put them on the higher doses every time they went back because their PSH was not coming down. And after taking this homeopathic medicines, they were able to come to a much lower doses as before and their PSH has come down, their T3, T4 level remains normal. So there is where the homeopathic medicine has acted. That has actually stimulated the thyroid gland to function back as before, near to normal. Okay. And since the patients are still with me, so I am hopeful that they uh, will do much better. I discontinue in all those, taking those 125 micro MG tablets that they started. And before that, they had been with 150 micro MG also. So definitely it stimulates the thyroid gland. Spongia, that the action you have uh, seen, what I extracted from uh, William Burt and uh, Plas Medica. How long we continue our homeo medicine? To patient if they are, uh, it depends. Uh, if they are already on thyroxine treatment, so it can be like in two months you can start tapering. But you have to rule out autoimmune thyroiditis. While treating autoimmune thyroiditis, be careful. Any stress factor, mental, physical, they may have shoot in TSH level. 
okay i had a failure in one such case uh, tsh level is 40 there is emaciation age is 22 not taking any kind of medication for last one why is she not taking medication is there there is no increase in weight we should think about it okay tsh level is 40 what about a anti tpo anti pg level okay you need is uh, Dr. Soumya Pandey because this is a young female. You need to do a complete workout of the case. PSH has increased the saturation. You can think about the uh, iodine and thyroidinum according to the case. Okay, TSH high but T3, T4 are normal. Uh, if the TSH is high but T3, T4 is normal, uh, simply disturb physiology. Yeah, uh, it is a subclinical condition. If TSH is high, are normal then it means that it is somewhere to getting disturbed it is subclinical hypothyroidism if t3 t4 are normal with high tsa body is still trying to cope up with the condition but yes you should treat this condition because if you don't treat at this time then definitely it will go a little bad into a clinical hypothyroid condition where t3 and t4 will also go out of hand do you have been very okay thank you after our treatment if patient is improved what is our protocol to stop or continue i think uh, for next three months at least you should keep the patient uh, under observation because you see once you start the treatment maybe uh, hypothyroid level or hyperthyroid levels would be under control but another layer see there are many factors when you are treating an endocrine disease there will be old symptoms resurfacing or genetic traits would be there they will be resurfacing you need to continue the treatment for at least two to three months to see how well your medicine has acted and now the glandular functions have come to normal okay so i definitely will keep the patient for next uh, uh, go to papa okay okay once you okay. once you taper the thyroxine medicine by 25 then on what basis later you reduce it by again the TSH uh, Dr. Seema, I think your son is the son is there. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think if we can all 17, 17, 17 minutes far, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. We yeah, have already okay. we have already exceeded our time limit. I yeah, think it's okay, better okay. to conclude this session. Thank you all for supporting. Yeah, I uh, if, yeah. if if you are comfortable then I can share your number, okay. Yeah, sure, sure. You can share my WhatsApp number and the email ID insighthealth20 at gmail.com. Okay. 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 If, yeah. if any participants have any doubts, you can ask directly. Though. Yeah, sure. Sure. So hypothyroid and basis. infertility protocol. So hypothyroid, definitely you need to correct the hypothyroidism if you find in a case of infertility. Once the menstruation are back to normal, if it is because of hypothyroidism, it is not complicated with PCOD then you can go further. I mean, it depends on the case. What are all parameters are disturbed because of the thyroid function. Okay. Okay, Dr. Ramasan. Okay, yeah. I can, okay, I think uh, we can conclude. Yeah. The session was very informative and uh, very yeah. Uh, yeah. energetic. Actually, yeah. the research in, research in homeopathy field is very little when compared to other systems of medicine. And it's the uh, high need of the time more homeopaths should enter into the research field yeah in homeopathy. Sorry to interrupt you i just want to i just missed a point what i actually want to rise from this thing you know there is a pitfall for homeopaths why and where do we fall short of this conventional medicine okay uh, if you go through if you share the slides in the first uh, slide of types of research there is uh, uh, meta-analysis one of the kind of research study Okay, when this uh, non homeopath non conventional system of medicine scientists go and go with this meta analysis, they find that there are very less paper, scientific papers in homeopathy. Okay, especially falling short of small or uh, large sample size. Okay, so these all things for them, this protocol is very clear. You should be showing your result in a larger sample size, which is effective in more number of population. Okay, so these are the things, whenever you have a uh, success, a cure, make sure that you can repeat it. Okay, and you present this case and get it published. So, more number of publications, we stand tall before this world. 
Okay, so this is a piece of like uh, sharing my experience as well as uh, what I feel. So more number of publication are really required in homeopathy. Through IHM also, I actually want to request IHMA to come forward for a peer-reviewed journal in future. It will take time, but I really uh, wish that IHMA comes up with this peer-reviewed journal. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you are right, uh, doctor. Many uh, results are wonderful results are there, especially in treating endocrine neurological disorders. But uh, the evidence we have to show is lacking. So I expect more doctors to come into this field and uh, to uh, publish their uh, evidence with evidences in such peer reviewed journals. Mm -hmm. So on behalf of IHMA, I'm expressing my sincere gratitude to Dr. Seema for leading today's session. You already mentioned everything in detail and regarding the thyroid disease also. So thank you, ma'am. And uh, wishing you a very uh, happy and uh, successful life throughout. Thanks, thanks. thanks. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Okay. And I would like to remind about today today's night session by Dr. Bashir. He will be taking okay. acute prescription made easy. Uh, that will be a very uh, wonderful session for the uh, newcomers, especially the new gen homeopaths. I am inviting you for that session at night, 9 p.m. today. I'm expecting all to be there. So we are concluding today's session. Thank you. Thank uh, you. All. Okay. Dr. Ramsil, one minute. Uh, we also have been uh, told you that there's a case presentation uh, session uh, for. Yes, doctor. Continue. Dibu, doctor, continue. There, there is something happened actually. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You continue. Okay, okay. We, we have a short paper presentation. Uh, so I request everybody to come up with the case and uh, please send us. If uh, you, all, you, all, you all will be getting a chance to uh, okay, okay, okay. present the case before you uh, okay. from next week. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So the IHMA is giving an opportunity to all the uh, newcom homeopaths or new gen homeopaths to present their papers with the evidence. And we have already published their poster regarding the same. And you can send your cases to that WhatsApp number. We will review it and inform you to present the case in such webinars in the, the coming weeks. So hopefully all will, all will utilize that opportunity. Once again, thank you for joining the session. Uh, we are concluding it. Bye. Thank you.